This is my workstation, and it is an absolute beast of a machine. This 15-year-old behemoth will be used as my main workstation and will become my daily driver. So let's take a closer look at this new workstation setup. All right, so this is my new Libre workstation setup. Finally got it completed. This is absolutely amazing. I am very satisfied on how this setup got to be. And let's just start talking about it. So I actually started building this machine back in December of 2022, which is, yeah, definitely a while ago. It was like literally two years ago. And it just took me a while to get the parts for this machine that I wanted and also school. Yeah, still school. Anyways, I finally got the parts that I wanted. I got some of the best parts my money could buy. I really wanted this to be the ultimate labor workstation. I wanted this to be the best on the internet. And I think I got to a point where that's the case. I'm hoping so. Anyways, let's get right into what I got here. All right, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. Other than this elephant in the room, let's talk about this guy. So this is my CRT. It's a non-name brand. I got it from the recycling center. There was a guy there who was about to throw it away. And so I, I went and asked him if I could take it. And he said, yeah, you go ahead and take it. And so I have it now. It is fully functional. I absolutely love this thing. To me, it's pretty big. This is a 16 inch monitor, which is really nice. I mean, it's scratched up. It, it's used, it's no big deal. I gave it a good clean. It works, I love it. And I just happen to have matching speakers with it, which is like literally perfect. This is like an awesome 90 setup. It just like fits so perfectly. I absolutely love it. So I'm using it. This is, I'm actually using this monitor as my main monitor. This is really nice. I'm starting to get into CRTs. This is truly amazing. I need to get a better one though, but this is, this is not bad. Um, as for my keyboard, nothing special. This is just a Dell keyboard. I got it at Recycle Center. I mean, the things people throw away, I'm, tell, I'm telling you, the things people throw away, this is, this is, this is truly amazing. Just grab it, it's free, it's totally awesome, it works, I can't, you just can't go wrong with it. Anyways, that's my keyboard. Mouse, same thing, nothing special, it's just, just a mouse. Mouse pad, can't go wrong with that. Um, I also got a Casanetetto background, which is totally awesome, I love it. And for this monitor, this is just a regular 1920 by 1080p play display. Nothing special about it, but you can't go wrong with it. Got my little background truly amazing all right so now let's talk about the specs of this machine starting with the motherboard i picked the kgpe d16 server motherboard which is one of the more powerful motherboards supported by libreboot libreboot is a free and open source bios replacement for the stock bios of your computer and is compatible with a variety of different x86 machines this was a mandatory criteria for me when choosing a motherboard, considering I'm building a Libre workstation. I picked this motherboard for it comes with the most amount of cores and threads and the most amount of RAM, which is what I'm looking for in a workstation. For the CPUs, I have two Opteron 6276 AMD CPUs, which are clocked at 2.3 GHz and are rocking 16 cores and 16 threads each, bringing a total of 32 cores and 32 threads. For the heatsinks, I use what the motherboard came with, which are two Dynatron 2U heatsinks. And I went ahead and replaced the fans with some Noctua fans to keep the machine a lot quieter. For the RAM, I maxed out this motherboard with a maximum of 256 gigabytes of ECC registered memory. That's honestly more than what I need, but this is the ultimate Libre workstation. So I figured I'll max out this motherboard. Plus you can't go wrong with more RAM. For the graphics card, I'm using the Quadro K2000, which is a graphics card that is compatible with a free software driver. And it's also a graphics card I had laying around with me, so I just went ahead and started using it. I would like to upgrade to the Quadro K6000 someday, for supposedly that's one of the more powerful graphics cards that can work with free software. I needed a sound card, for the motherboard doesn't have an output audio jack in the back. So I went ahead and got a sound card that I found at the recycling center. This was an old PCI card, which is nice considering I do have one PCI port on my motherboard. So I went ahead and put it in and it worked just fine. I went ahead and got a platinum power supply, 
for I wanted the more efficiency for this motherboard consumes a lot of power. So I got the EVGA A50 P2. For the case, I got the Corsair 750D Airflow Edition. Airflow was a priority when I was using the case, but I also wanted drive bays in the front. And most full ATX cases either had all fans in the front or just drive bays in the front, which was very annoying. And I also needed to make sure that the case was able to support the SSI EEB form factor, which was the form factor of my massive motherboard. This proved to be a problem, and it gave me very little options to choose from. Thankfully, my brother gave me his old case, for he got a new case for his desktop, and it just so happens to cover exactly what I'm looking for. The one problem being, this case doesn't actually fully support the SSI EEB form factor, even though the motherboard physically fits in the case. Luckily, I was able to get six out of the nine screw holes that made this motherboard fit in this case. And it was good enough for me. The motherboard was holding up. For the fans, I got four 140mm Noctuas, two 60mm Noctuas for the heat sinks, and two industrial grade 140mm Noctuas for the front of the case, bringing a total of eight fans. I wanted to make sure that my computer stays cool when doing workstation tasks. So I went ahead and got all Noctua fans for this computer. And I even went ahead and got two industrial grade Noctuas for the front of the machine. I went ahead and got the 2000 RPM version of the industrial grade Noctua fan. The one downside with these industrial grade fans is that they are louder than the regular Noctua fans, which made my machine a little bit louder. All right, so here's the volume of the fans when the computer is on. In my opinion, it ain't that bad. And I think to the camera, it ain't that bad either. Granted, I'm not using the best microphone. I'm using my phone right now to record, so I'm using whatever's built in. But to me, it ain't as obnoxious as I thought it would be, which is actually pleasantly surprising, and it's actually a really good thing. All right, so on the monitor, I have LM sensors up right now, so I can show you the, the speed of the fans. However, right now, I think LM sensors is inaccurate for sure, because, for example, I have the industrial grade Noctua fans, and it's telling me I'm running at 3100 RPM, which is inaccurate because these fans are only capable of going up to 2000 RPM. And as far as the other Noctua fans are concerned, I am like ranging from 1100 RPM to 1800 RPM. And those fans are only capable of going up to 1500. So I'm not sure what's happening here. I'm gonna have to find a different program later, but these fans are still worth it because my CPUs are really cool. Right now on idle, my first CPU is idling at 20 degrees Celsius, which is really, really good for these Opterons. And as far as my second CPU is concerned, it's idling around 30 degrees. So there is a 10 degree difference there, which is actually pretty big, but overall, both CPUs are really, really cool. And I am really satisfied with how good they are right now on idle. So these Nocto fans, for sure, I think are totally worth it. I don't mind the noise. I think the noise ain't that bad. It's definitely not as obnoxious as I thought it would be. And I think it's totally usable and totally doable. So these fans are absolutely totally worth it. I would like to get a fan controller someday. That way, I could just control the speed of the fans with just a twist of a knob. Well, there you have it. The ultimate Libre workstation. This machine was a long time in the making, and I am finally done building it. And I am so happy with how the setup turned out. I think it's going to be a great start to a new setup. Um, later on, I'm going to get a new keyboard and a new mouse. Uh, for now, this is what I got from the Recycling Center. It's free. I might get a new CRT later too, but that will be future upgrades. As of right now, I think this is a great start. This motherboard came out in 2009, and as of the making of this video, it's 2024. So I'm going to be using a 15-year-old machine as my daily driver doing workstation tasks. I'm going to keep creating videos with this computer, and overall, I'm just going to have a lot of fun with this new workstation setup. So thank you so much for watching this video and have a good one.